In other news, Prime Minister Netanyahu met on Tuesday with the families of POWs and those missing in action for the first time in many months. But after speaking with the Golden Shaul Mengistu and Al Sayed families, the general feeling was of abandonment again, as Hadar Golden's family, for one, demanded yet again that Prime Minister Netanyahu apply additional leverage against Hamas for the return of the bodies and prisoners. But Netanyahu continues to refuse, so as not to risk damaging the fragile ceasefire with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. So, did Netanyahu make the right decision? Well, here now to discuss is diplomatic analyst Idan Ronen and Aftali Ben Simon, a journalist and a member of the Likud party. Thank you both very much for coming in. Thanks a lot. Thanks. So, I'll start with you, actually, uh, Naftali, because, you know, you're with the Likud party, maybe, so maybe you have some insights here. You know, did Netanyahu make the right call, and, and why or why not? Well, first of all, I, uh, yes, he made uh, the right uh, decision. And it's a very, very delicate issue. Sure. And, of course, we can blame him uh, that uh, it's the election period, or maybe he just wanted to, to calm uh, the families. And maybe it's because the five years of the last operation in Gaza. But it, he, he see the whole picture. And the whole picture is that we are talking about one of the most complicated issues in the history of this country, is to bring back home our children, our soldiers, our prisoners in, in, in the different countries. But in this case, it cannot uh, make, a, and, and I will make a, a di distinction between civilians and soldiers. And I think in this case, I'm talking about two dead soldiers and the issue of bringing them home, it's totally different from what we saw in Gilad Shalit issue. But, okay, but continuing off of, you know, what you just said, you said two soldiers, but there's also, let's not forget, Mengistu and, and Asayed, uh, who are I'm not totally, soldiers, yes, who are non-combatants. I, I don't, and, it's not that I care or not, but, but I think we must may, uh, make a distinction between soldiers and civilians. Civilians arrive to Gaza by, by their own. Soldiers went there by the author, authorization of the government, and they were soldiers. And soldiers know right, that well, they can be killed in action. All right, well, Idan, you know, what, what's your take on this? You know, because... Again, taking, taking the Goldens and the Shaul's uh, argument for them, they're saying, you know, how can this not be at the forefront of our argument? Why isn't that the top priority in any negotiation with Hamas? Well, first off, let us first credit those families. And I just would like to highlight one certain point, um, and that is to credit their nobility. Because unlike the other prisoner exchange swaps, even the mere word exchange is non-existent in their vocabulary. They do not ask for any exchange of prisoners. They only want to make leverage on top of Hamas. And that is to their credit, because they know that if Hamas prisoners will be released, that's going to cause the blood of more Israelis. That's a point, before we, before we discuss everything else, that's a point to their credit, to their nobility, sure. and we have to mention that now. I see them, um, and I will be kind of, um, you know, because I have to maintain my own sources, um, it's all a matter of the of electorate. It's all a matter of that. I know, yes, just as uh, Naftali mentioned, we are in an uh, um, uh, election campaign. Uh, that's going to be the least of, um, of his priorities right now to take care of the families. But the thing was, when the Goldens and the Shauls and they were crying out, why did you remind only now? We can create Netanyahu that behind the scenes, he has done a lot. We can tell for sure. We will never be able to tell for sure. However, we have to remember that um, the mere fact that he has, I, that's the way I see it, he has trapped Netanyahu himself with this ongoing novel with Hamas that, you know, once they bomb us, we'll, once they rocket us, we will extend with extra mile or so their fishing zone. Once they bomb us less, Edan, we will Edan. so and so. It's, it's, Hamas and will never give something to Israel because it's the only uh, arms or tools that he has against uh, the state of Israel. He will not. We are a mighty country. Or, it is or, a, it or is we give him but it is a, a formal recognition also, or a thousand... It is, uh, uh, it is intolerable that, uh, so, that this organization, which 
It's, it's just a, a bunch of gangsters. Yeah, They're just of a bunch course. of gangsters. They are able to dictate to the mighty empire of the Middle East what to do in according to their own terms. It is preposterous. It is ridiculous. Uh, well, so I, so I want to ask you know because you pointed to Gilad Shalit earlier. Yes. What are the biggest difference be, differences between the situation with Gilad Shalit versus now? One is alive, and the others are not. Well, Hisham and Sayem and Mengistu are S their, no, their I, condition I, I, is not known. I'm not talking about civilians. But we're talking. But we're talking no, about bringing Israelis home. No, I'm not Israelis talking. For home. me, they are not prisoners. They are. They are. Well, then what are they? They're, they're being held they against their will in, citizens, in Gaza. They are citizens who cross the border. Right, but they, but about they were, but they soldiers, were mentally ill. No, they didn't know that they didn't know what they were yeah, doing. They, and, they, and either way, is that does that does that justify their being kidnapped? No, that's a different negotiation. That can take years. That can uh, we can wait about soldiers' negotiation. So uh, Gilad Sharit was a live soldiers, and we are talking about two dead soldiers there. So the price is different. The attitude is different. The main uh, media focus is different, and it's a very painful. But I'm telling you that every day by day, in the prime minister office, there is a team who is working. There's a team who is 100% dedicated, dedicated just to this. Dedicated to this issue. 100% dedicated to this issue. But we cannot talk to the Hamas. We have no partner. And we, we, we have two dead soldiers there. And it's a very, very, very complicated Naftali, situation. Let me ask you some comments. What would have happened if Victor Lieberman would have kept up to his own word as he has promised and he has pledged in Hebrew and it was, you can document what I'm saying. I'm giving you Hania, uh, Hamas Prime Israel, Minister, yeah, yeah, sure. uh, 48 hours. Either you bring back the dead bodies or you're going to find yourself buried deep down the ground. What would have happened if only Lieberman would have kept his word? This is a, a political situation, a decision, right, well. and I think I, I, I will agree with this decision if we, we kept it all, all the way. No, but, but we right. decided... What I'm to say well, is a matter of spine, a matter of spine, so, guts and courage to be a leader and show, no, I will not allow this bunch of gangsters to dictate uh, their terms uh, to us. Uh, right, believe well, me, hostages is the most delicate <laughs> issue well, in all, all over the world. That. In well, all over the world. And our Jewish heart goes forward yes. in the front of everybody else. Yes. All right, well, Idan... Uh, <laughs> Idan Ronen and Naftali Ben-Simon, thank you both very much for thank coming you. in. Thanks uh, a lot. Thank you.